From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Paul Gigo with uh, Joe Sternberg and uh, Jillian Melchor. And the Tory party, Joe, putting on quite the show the last two months, putting a capital D on dysfunction. Really quite something with Liz Truss's resignation last week. Now the British Tories rallying behind Rishi Sunak to become the new prime minister after former prime minister Boris Johnson decided on the weekend that he would not contest the election after all. Remember, he famously left with his resignation speech when he resigned from the prime ministership, being pushed out by fellow Tories. He compared himself to Cincinnatus, the uh, Roman general who went back to his plow after uh, serving his uh, empire. And apparently uh, Boris almost thought about uh, giving up the plow and coming back to uh, parliament. But he decided that he would wait for another day, I assume. I don't think he's given up his ambitions. But why did he drop out and why are they rallying behind Rishi Sunak, who is chancellor of the exchequer under Boris Johnson, and has a far from distinguished record because he was presiding over the economic policies that put the British economy into its current mess. So in terms of Boris Johnson and what he's been up to over the past few months, I suspect that the reason that he decided that he didn't want to take another play for the prime ministership this time around was that there was a very good chance that he would have lost. Remember, what's going on here is it isn't really an election. It is the conservative members of parliament amongst themselves are coming together and were meant to pick the person who would be their leader, who would then become the prime minister. And so I think that there was a view emerging that Boris was still too polarizing and that his MPs were still too traumatized, especially by the end of his period in office when he was engulfed in a bunch of various scandals and the economy was performing poorly for him to effectively unite the party. And so who they focused on is Rishi Sunak, who was the also ran for the leadership contest the party ran over the summer to replace Boris. At that time, Rishi Sunak had lost in a vote of the party rank and file out in the countryside. To their choice was Liz Truss. But the members of parliament, many of them had thought that that was a mistake that their own party members had made. And so I think that MPs have taken this opportunity now to fix what they think was a mistake. Unfortunately, they have saddled themselves with the former chancellor of the Exchequer, who was responsible for a lot of the tax policies, you know, increasing taxes, putting taxes on track to hit the highest level as a percentage of GDP in 70 years. That had been Rishi's main accomplishment as chancellor. And now they're stuck with him as the prime minister. And I think that that is probably a political mistake for them, that they felt that they were out of any other option. Well, I suppose, I guess a mistake, but it's any port in a storm, I guess, uh, out of other options. But the way I would put this is that there's a certain rough political justice here because now Rishi Sunak has to preside over the economy he helped to produce. So we'll see if he can get out of it. Now, the irony here is that Liz Truss had tried through new policies, growth policies that she proposed, and they lasted about two weeks as a proposal, to galvanize the British economy, give new incentives to produce, even as interest rates were going up. Now, Rishi Sunak is going to give up on all this. Apparently, he's going to keep Liz Truss as second chancellor, Jeremy Hunt, who's given up all of the growth tax cuts, just retains at least so far the payroll tax reduction that Truss had wanted. And there's a real question as rates go up and as the energy prices just wallop the British economy whether or not you can actually get back to growth and avoid a deep recession, Joe. Yeah, the big political and economic mistake here was that the party lost its nerve and didn't stick with Liz Truss when she was trying to give them a policy way out of this morass. Because the reality is that Britain, like the U.S., is suffering inflation that's running at a 40-year high. I think the latest number was something like 10.1% price rises over the past year. Interest rates are going to have to go up. We've discovered in the market turmoil over the past month that that is not going to be an easy transition for financial markets or for British homeowners, many of whom see their payments go up every month much faster than American homeowners do when interest rates rise over here. And so the Liz Trust solution to that was to try to say, okay, the rates are going to have to go up because of the inflation. 
We're going to have this risk of financial instability, this burden on homeowners, but what we can do to compensate for that is do the pro-growth, pro-investment, pro-productivity tax reform to try to ease some of that burden. And what I think that they're about to belatedly discover is that the alternative to that is that you still get the bruising rate rises and all of the financial turmoil that that threatens, all of the pain for homeowning householders with their mortgages, but none of the offsetting chance at economic growth. And I think it's a very poisonous situation for the Tories to put themselves in because they've always been perceived as the party of prosperity, of economic growth, of good economic management. Management, and that is not what they have set themselves up to deliver now. Well, it sure isn't. And it sounds like these Tories are setting themselves up for an austerity policy agenda that serves the bond markets in the cause of keeping bond rates low, meaning creditors, and trying to prevent a decline in the British pound, which will be hard to do because with the Federal Reserve hiking rates faster than the Bank of England, that's one of the main causes of the exchange rate decline. So the Tories have to call an election by January 2025 at the latest. Keir Starmer, the Labour opposition leader, is calling for one immediately. Understandably, he wants to take advantage of this big lead in the polls that they have now. I assume Sunak will attempt to put that off as long as possible. But the lead now is well over 20 points, isn't it, Joe? Yes. And Rishi Sunak has said today that he intends to govern until the last possible moment when they have to call an election in a couple of years. But I just think that the pressure to call an election early is going to grow stronger and stronger and may eventually prove irresistible. Because the last time Britons went to the polls to elect the parliament was in 2019, when Boris Johnson won a historic majority of 80 seats for the Conservatives, which they still mostly have in Parliament. But that was under very different circumstances. It was under Boris's leadership. It was when Brexit was a major issue. You know, the Conservatives have not since then been able to develop any kind of electoral mandate or demonstrate any great cohesion behind the kind of policies that they would need to get through the current environment. And I think that it becomes harder and harder for the public to accept one prime minister after another after another is coming in without the benefit of an election to produce a mandate. And where you see all of this flailing on economic policies while the voters are in a great deal of economic distress every time they try to balance their checkbooks. And of course, you have people in the United States, particularly those who prefer big government, Uh, recommending that the Tories go this austerity route, give up on the trust's pro-growth tax-cutting agenda. But they'll be only too happy if the Tories then lose, having adopted their ideas. Yes. I mean, this is the other aggravating thing about this debate is that a lot of big government conservatives on both sides of the Atlantic are very anxious to blame Liz Truss for everything that has happened for ill in the British economy over the past month. Britain would not be in the fix that it's in if the Tories hadn't been pursued pursuing various forms of big government conservative agenda for the past 12 years. But it has been a long string of attempts at the British version of compassionate conservatism, pursuing a green agenda with conservative characteristics, Boris Johnson's embrace of net zero, which has really helped to push up energy prices to terribly destructive levels for households. All of that is exactly what destabilized Boris Johnson's administration in the first place, paved the way for these scandals to push him out the door and brought Liz Truss in in the the first place as the party's rank and file, their last ditch effort to turn things around. So don't blame Liz Truss for not managing to find a solution to these problems in the six weeks she managed to stay in office. Blame the big government conservative Tories who were in power for 12 years before her. And Jillian, you can look forward to all of this, covering this when you move to London here in the coming weeks. I guess you're going to be there in January. So Tory dysfunction will be on your agenda, but maybe you'll be able to benefit from a stronger pound. I don't know. (laughs) We shall see. I'm looking forward to it either way. All right. Thanks, Jillian. Thanks, Joe. And thanks to all of you for listening. Be sure to send your comments in to pwpodcast at wsj.com. We're here every day on Potomac Watch, and we hope to have you with us again tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. Thanks so much for listening.